So yeah, uh, so there are some things that uh, actually interesting that I want you to do that you know won't take up the whole hour, but um, but you know I want to do it. Um, I actually haven't tried it. I, other than that, I had the thought of doing it uh, last week, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So it goes with the conceptual questions, which I think I mentioned before that um, these conceptual questions I've. Uh, done them with the help of generative AI in previous semesters and you can see them on the on this playlist that's on our YouTube channel um, and you know physics 4a stuff just scroll down a little bit you'll see two versions for physics 4a uh, one that I did a, a year ago one that I did the last semester the one from last semesters when where you know I was seeing uh, uh, not just GPT, it's a perplexity, but it still uses GPT. It uses GPT-4 as its engine. Uh, so perplexity GPT-4 where I saw, oh, wow, that's doing pretty well. Um, so I think uh, in some sense, we've done this exactly that, you know, free body drawing and drawing exercises. So this is the conceptual question. Now, the uh, difference is that back then, um, I was just using perplexity, and uh, I don't think a chat GPT. I also didn't have the capability that I'm gonna use now, which is um, can it do image-based tasks? Uh, so here, what I basically did was um, the images that you will see here. They have uh, accessibility features built in, which means there's a, a text that it's meant to be used by. Um, a screen reader. So someone who's blind could still go through this class, get what they uh, can get out of it. And um, so treating perplexity like a very smart blind person, we would describe an image to it. Um, again, the descriptions are already built into the questions themselves. And uh, it'll describe how it would draw the free body diagram and I would draw it um, on its behalf. And I've done that and, you know, for mo the most part, it's done well. There are some uh, diagrams that it hasn't drawn correctly. Um, so that's what we, what I did last semester. And, you know, uh, I, I hate doing the same stuff over and over. So if that's all it is, then I probably won't be doing that again. But what's now exciting in some sense is ChatGPT has two new, uh, and this time I actually mean ChatGPT, uh, Pay the for version because you need to be able to use GPT-4 with a DALI and um, yeah, GPT-4 with a DALI. Um, so one part of it uh, can analyze the image and the other part of it can generate image. So that's what I want to try. Let's see how well it goes. Um, so, uh, you know, for this, I'm going to be a little bit careful how I'm asking the question. So I'll do it this way. I'm going to copy and paste the image and ask it to uh, please describe uh, what you see in the figure. And then after it's described it, I'm going to ask for a free body diagram. Um, and um, now I do know or I do suspect it won't draw correct free body diagrams because uh, DALI has never been able to draw free body diagrams the way we teach. Um, so I suspect uh, ChatGPT can draw correct free body diagram, but it can probably describe the uh, image correctly. Let's see, simple diagram, or sitting on a wire, wire is, yeah, dash the line, that horizon, yeah, 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 creating V shape, about this point. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's misunderstanding that, okay. It's not rotational movement, um, so let's see. But okay, but data, so angle of the wires, deviation from horizontal, yeah, that is correct, okay. Physical scenario, possible principle mechanics or physics. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's say that's right. Uh, would you draw a free body diagram? Um, let me give it a little bit of an and uh, or do I? Um, let me play it on and kind of repeat this question. The actual free body diagram that you need isn't really off the board, it's of the point that the board is it's on, but let's, let me just try. Free body diagram of the forces acting on the bird. Because uh, 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 this diagram can be drawn in a really trivial way. Downward gravity, upward normal force, which doesn't help you answer the, um, solve for the tension force. Um, OK, 
okay it's a force tension forces okay so these might be correct description um now it's giving still giving me description but not uh generating the oh let's draw okay okay now it might be doing the um yeah 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 it's bringing in dolly on its own so that's what it does the descriptions look good Generated images from Dali has been um, so far so stylized. It's more of an artwork than free body diagram. But let's see. <laughs> I haven't tried this before. I will say before it finishes generating that these descriptions are correct. So if you read them, understand them, and draw the simple free body diagram the way we teach, then that's correct. <laughs> uh, and I, I knew GPT could do that last semester because perplexity, again, is using GPT-4 as its engine. Uh, I like perplexity better because it tends to hallucinate less than ChatGPT does, and it has links to the internet, um, so you, there are sources you can follow. Uh, I don't know why this is taking so long. Um, the other Dali generated image has... Uh... Oh, wow, it's actually... That is interesting. Oh, wow. Uh... Yeah, so I mean, um, so I would say don't draw these axes, you know, <laughs> that looks super wrong. But in terms of the number of arrows and uh, their qualitative features, that is actually correct. Wow, GPT has gotten good. Uh, yeah, yeah, all these descriptions good. Now, you know, don't copy and paste this. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think, um, so I've mentioned this elsewhere. Um, if you are using generative AI as a learning tool, as in uh, you really are not sure how to do a free body diagram, you've read the descriptions in the textbook, you've watched my videos, and you're still not sure how to apply it to this situation, and um, you are using it as a virtual tutor, and like this is showing you how you should do a free body diagram, then um, yeah, as long as you are learning from what you are seeing, that's um, that's fine. And I will tell you that uh, all it has, other than, you know, when we draw free body diagram, we don't draw the axis like this. Other than that, this actually looks good. Um, yeah. Okay, let's try the next question. Um, so, thank you. Um, please describe the situation in this uh, image. Oops, typo. It's fine. It won't bother uh, ChatGPT. Incline the plane. Uh, let's see if we get the uh, the external force right. We're spinning it solid in the direction of the arrow. These forces. An angle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, um, so you know, with these, I don't have to generate alt text. They already have it. But I think this can actually be pretty good at generating the accessible text for figures. Yeah, please pronounce something. So after this next question, uh, I'm my, I'm gonna try doing it in one step. Uh, um, I broke it up thinking that that'll help uh, ChatGPT and uh, it, so far it's done well with the problem one. Let me um, uh, try with the problem two. So, okay. So that's right. Uh, would you draw a free body uh, FBD of the forces acting on the crate? Um, let's see if it does well. Um, so there are three forces that it should draw correctly. You know, I didn't tell it that it was frictionless, so it might still draw friction. Um, we'll see. 
Yeah, gravitational force downward, that's good description. Normal force, perpendicular to surface, good description. Okay, this um, is wrong description because for apply the forces along the incline. Yeah, so I think it's still not doing it 100% correctly. We'll see. Yeah, and that analysis could take a while. Apparently, what it's doing here is it's generating a code. Uh, that's uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, wow. Well, uh, so, so uh, let's uh, look at its analysis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the axis thing it's drawing, it's, I guess, an uh, artifact of the tool it's using because it's using a plotting tool to, um, to generate the figures. So um, then I can see that, all right, it kind of takes a lot of work to get rid of the axis labels and all that. So uh, component to the gravitational force. Now, you so, say, you know, it's uh, <laughs> doing a lot of, uh, it kind of makes sense, you know, when a chess engine analyzes position, it does a lot of work to um, get something that a, 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 like a trained chess professional would get intuitively. Uh, that's what free body diagram is supposed to be uh, for us human beings, you know, graphical problem solving tool that uh, allows you to use your intuition to draw uh, forces and kind of get a sense of the situation. Um, but because uh, AI doesn't have intuition, it's generating code instead. Uh, I'm not sure if it's generating proper uh, aspects of the code. It might be doing it wrong. I'll, I'll look at the figure it's drawing and see um, if that figure makes a sense. Uh, like trying to make sense of this code. Uh, one, I don't know what axis it's working with. So, uh, and some of these things that it's using, like plot quiver, that I I don't know what that is. And PLT, did they even define PLT? They don't even define PLT. There's like something that it was supposed to have imported and. Uh, uh, defined, I think. Like PLT is probably a, an object or an object in like a new plot uh, module or something. But I don't think if you copy and paste this code into Python, I don't think it'll work. Because, you know, PLT is not defined. Uh, oh, all right, let's see, regenerate. Um, yeah, let me not just show the analysis and just wait. This could take a while. Um, Yeah, I think this matches better what it was um, uh, generating code for. And that's uh, certainly one way you can draw a free body diagram. Oh, but let me point out one thing that your textbook does that uh, I actually don't recommend. So after it's done, finish the drawing free body diagram, and I, I'm not going to open the analyzing, I'll just let it run on its own. Um, after it's done uh, generating free body diagram, um, let me first see if it's drawn it the way I would have drawn it. And I will point out one thing that your textbook does that it's not technically wrong, but um, it's not something I agree with. So uh, I'll let me point it out. I wonder if uh, the fact that we are watching it generate the code uh, was messing with it somehow. I don't know. Yeah, this looks super um, wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, gravity is right, okay, downward. 
normal force. I think it's gotten confused between the two tries. It's already seen the image. It should know normal force goes that way, not this way. Um, now, yeah, even if you were to flip it around and say this is the slope, it still got it wrong. The applied force should be going up the slope, not down the slope. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's still a uh, work in progress. Not all that good. So let me point out uh, one thing um, that your textbook does that I actually don't agree with. It kind of goes with the, when you draw a free body diagram, it's supposed to be a um, super simplified picture of uh, forces. And after you draw a free body diagram, you're going to annotate it. Um, as a as a matter of um, like solving through, but your textbook does something that I noticed the last semester that, um, and I've seen other pe people do it, and I guess if you do do it, then now that I know it's from your textbook, I won't, you know, be so annoyed <laughs> because I should be annoyed at your textbook, not you. Uh, but it's this thing that it does that I don't recommend. Uh, so it's drawn, you know, forces. Okay, that's great. That's how we do it. Now, it's uh, breaking forces into components, which we do do. We do that in step three of our standard strategy. But as it's doing that, it's scratching out the original vector and just drawing those components as separate vectors. I don't recommend that. Whenever you have seen me apply um, standard strategy, in step one, you draw free body diagram, and that stays. I don't scratch out anything there. And after that, all you are doing is annotating. You are adding uh, decorations that um, kind of summarizes your analysis. You might add a small decoration that indicates the direction of acceleration and another small decoration indicating the axis that you define. That's a step number two. And in step number three, you might add more decorations that shows the component to break down. But as you draw those decorations, you make sure that you draw them in a way that you won't confuse them with the original force vectors. This uh, practice of uh, drawing the components as their own force vectors and then trying to erase the other force vector, I think that really clutters up your diagram, so, so I don't recommend it. And when you draw the components, I recommend that you draw them in a triangle form that help you figure out the expressions for these components with the least amount of confusion as possible. So, so with that, uh, we still got like nine more figures, so let's go through them. Um, so we starting with this figure, I'm going to um, uh, do it in one step. Let's see if I get any different message with that. So uh, would you please draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the block shown on the figure? Let's see um, how well it does in a single step um, uh, process like this. I've been told that sometimes generative AI does better when you ask it follow-up questions, when you um, kind of when it's more conversational. So. So we'll see. Okay, gravitational force downward to our center. Okay, um, good. Normal force acting perpendicular to the surface. Good. Spring force. Yeah, good. Um, and uh, I didn't tell it it's a friction. You shouldn't be drawing this as a separate force. You already drew gravity. Yeah, shouldn't be drawing this separately. So it's kind of gone off the rails with the numbers four and five. Uh, okay, this is a good assumption. And, and uh, so th that's actually a good default assumption in a lot of introductory physics classes. Um, don't include the friction unless you have to, or unless you know, unless you have to, or unless it's indicated. Um, so it, it, on, we, a way it might be indicated is by uh, us giving you a friction coefficient. Uh, a way it might be required is, um, so sometimes the problem will specify that something isn't like a sliding against each other. That means that there must be static friction. And later on in the semester, in about two months, when we do rigid body motion and rotation and rolling, sometimes to get uh, something that we are going to describe as rolling without sleeping, that requires friction, even though the problem might not hint anywhere that there's friction involved. But um, 
physics being fundamental science, our bias is for simplest possible description. So uh, we first try describing something without friction, and if that works well enough, hey, <laughs> we are making assumption that friction is not significant. I mean, so it's not, you know, drawing it as quickly as I would draw, um, but maybe that's the only edge I have over. Um, I, I, I don't know. There's a one above that where the its responses were actually wrong. So speed isn't the only advantage I over. I have over ChatGPT. We'll see how accurate its diagram is for this one. But it is, it is getting crazy good. I, I guess the question is, um, you know, how much computational power does it take? Uh, and how... So this subscription I got is 20... Uh, let's regenerate. So uh, one thing I can tell you is if anyone was tempted to use this to cheat during a uh, timed assessment, I think this will do warn you to stay away because um, it, <laughs> you don't have a lot of time in a timed assessment. All this is taking time. And, um, and, and uh, you know, if it kind of crashes during a response, it regenerates and you're going to run out of time. So, um, so not that I'm giving anyone advice on how to cheat, but it looks like using this to cheat on a timed assessment is still not good. <laughs> Although I'm not relying on that being true um, uh, in the near future. So, anyways, I gotta think of something to talk about while it's doing this analysis. I think uh, opening in code, I don't know, this time it crashed even though I wasn't watching the code. So I might just uh, look at the code anyway. Because uh, whether it crashes or not, if that doesn't depend on me looking at the code, then uh, staring at this gives, you know, more things for me to... So NP, that's uh, likely an acronym for NumPy. So really what it... There's a code that's missing at the top. There should be an import NumPy as NP. Like... Without that, this code won't work. So, um, so you can't just copy and paste this into your Python environment and use it. You really need a Python environment that's set up for scientific calculation that has NumPy, it has some plotting module, and um, you kind of have to be familiar with how those environments are set up for you to be able to run code like this without errors. If you just copy and paste into Python, I'm pretty sure that won't work. It looks like it'll finish this time. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure from the output I saw before that this is new plot. Uh, so I guess that's cut off there. Oh, I think it just got the scales way off. Yeah, th this is just wrong, all right? Weight downward, okay. Uh, normal force. That's wrong direction. Weight par like yeah, it shouldn't be drawing weight parallel, spring force, yeah, that is way off. Um so yeah, um so the kind of the thing that uh, perplexity was doing and still can, the descriptions they are decent. Um again, I think this portion is more confusing than helpful. You should just gra draw gravity straight downward for the in terms of the free body diagram. Normal force, okay, the description here is good, and you being human being, you can look at the figure and draw it perpendicular away from the uh, surface. Uh, elastic force, yeah, those are the three forces. Um, and yeah, error in generating, oh, I guess it was, doing, it's fine, uh, network error. It's fine. Um, do I need to regenerate? Um, I wish. Let me just try refreshing and see if it'll give me a place. Okay, okay, I think that's good. Uh, yeah. View analysis, what is that? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, that's the code that it generated. 
So, okay, so um, this one again, it kind of got it wrong. I think it's still work in progress, but again, given the progress we've seen in, in a year, uh, it might actually get pretty good. <laughs> uh, uh, please draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the block if the block is accelerating slightly of the frictionless slope shown on the diagram. Wonder if it'll crash again. Um, this is taking a while. Um, I guess I could uh, one way I could do um, which I didn't really go that way at the beginning of the session so I don't think I'm gonna switch now. Uh, for the purpose of editing this video for future use, um, in these parts I could just stay silent. That makes uh, it easier to edit the parts out, and I can have a shorter video. But uh, let me just leave it long. You know, these are not really. Um, I'm, I'm just playing with the tool. I'm not <laughs> doing anything that's super um, crucial. Super. Uh, let me actually read these instructions. Uh, so yeah. Gravitational force acting downwards. Again, this component at this moment in time, I think that's more confusing than helpful. Normal force perpendicular, good. Uh, by the way, the process of drawing, drawing free body diagram at some point should really get mechanical. That is our goal. Um, it's, uh, so when you're starting, it's the part where it takes your most creativity, most care, most time. And with the practice, our goal is that it becomes mechanical, something that you can do in your sleep that uh, every free body diagram looks quite similar to each other. That is what we are going for. Uh, apply the force acting at, into from the, uh, um, yeah, so that, this is actually correct. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend drawing the components at the uh, standard strategy, step number one, but um, yeah. It's a little slow, let's not parallel the force, yeah. yeah. We'll see. Uh, what code has it generated? So again, this code won't work unless you are in an environment to set up with the NumPy and all the stuff that they are using. Because it hasn't shown you the steps for setup. This warning, by the way, is worth hitting. <laughs> it does make mistakes, <laughs> all of those mistakes are getting fewer and farther in between. Uh, but at least for this, so it drew correct free body diagram of number one, two and three missed. Let's look at number four and then we'll you know keep a tally. Uh, if we get to number four right, it would have gotten more right than wrong. Okay. Gravity. Yeah, these are just all going in random directions. That that is so. Um, I mean, it's in the right style. It's uh, you know. Uh, it's, it's, at the end of this session, I'll show you the kind of drawing I was seeing that made me think, oh, it's terrible. It's not gonna do anything. But it's at least in the right style. But the forces are just going in all over the place. This normal force that's not going in the right direction. Apply the force. I guess the parallel and perpendicular are somehow, you know, perpendicular to each other. So that's okay. But um, so the component that's parallel to the surface it should be going something like this direction. In perpendicular. I guess this swapped could maybe make a bit of a sense. But yeah. But the normal force ought to have the correct relationship with this. Normal force should have been the same direction as apply the force perpendicular and there. Uh, you know that kind of internal consistency check. That's not something that ChatGPT can do. So okay, did the number four incorrectly. Uh, so let me show you. See if uh, uh, I said I and um, so let me see if uh, it still generates a similar kind of image when I ask for this. Uh, draw a free body diagram of a block on an inclined plane. Because we are in an um, environment where I've already asked some introductory physics related questions, it might actually not do the other thing that it used to do. Um, Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to do that. So I'll um, just come back later in a new chat thread and um, and do that later. <laughs> but let's finish this conceptual questions exercise. 
which uh, might take the whole hour because ChatGPT is so slow. Um, Yeah, again, what it's doing here, I don't recommend that. Uh, it's not a separate force that's already part of the force that you drew for gravity. Um, I, I don't know why it keeps doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, don't draw this as a separate force. I, I don't even know. That must be coming from some sort of training material, but someone made a mistake that's getting put into every single one this does. Okay, can I say tell it to stop generating? No, I can't tell it to stop generating. Oh, wait, I can. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, let me move on to the next one. Because uh, I, I can already see it's not going to do the other thing that it was doing before. I'll do it in a new thread. So, uh, draw free body diagrams of the two blocks, M1 and M2, uh, shown in figure. This it'll probably draw correctly. So I guess it's not doing all that well on two-dimensional problems. I imagine because there's a lot of um, kind of uh, fine-tuning to work out when it's uh, generating those uh, plotting codes for drawing the arrows. But these are one-dimensional stuff. Um, it might be able to get it right. We'll see. The blocks M1 and M2 in their system. Yeah. So, um, oh, I didn't tell it to assume M2 is larger than M1, but it can assume one or the other. It doesn't kind of matter. It only uh, matters in figuring out the direction of acceleration. So gravity and tension, that's great. Those are the two forces. Um, it's a simple setup. <laughs> Don't need to make it complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great assumption. Even when we don't say it, assume that, unless we gave you some information to, that goes against that. Attention throughout the um, Now, in order to do that, I think uh, you also need to assume that rope is massless. But that's also common, so it's fine. Uh, yeah. Let's look at the code. Again, I'm saying, if you copy and paste this into a vanilla Python environment, it won't work. There's some kind of setup you need to do first. Because oh, so it's assuming they are, have the same mass, in which case they won't accelerate. I don't quite recognize. There might be a, um, I was thinking a new plot, G and new plot, but um, maybe the scientific computing for Python environments these days have a, oh, you know, they might have something called a matplotlib. I think that is uh, what this is probably. Uh, something called uh, matplotlib. That's a fairly popular plotting package in Python, and that's who, what, what would be my guess that this is based on. But again, um, you have to set up the environment. <laughs> you can't just start with this. Uh, your Python is an AI run. It won't guess what you meant by NP and PLT. Almost done. Yeah, this takes a while. So, you know, I did it today because, you know, I didn't have anything important to cover, and this was new capability in generative AI since I've done this last. Um, probably won't do it again in future classes until I see it uh, doing better free body diagrams. <laughs> I, I might like give it a try on my own before uh, schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before scheduling a session uh, dedicated to just watching generative AI work. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, I don't know. We don't have a lot of important things. I think it's fine. I, again, I've done all the questions. And if uh, we finish before the hour's up, I'll look through some of this. And um, yeah, and these are kind of evergreen agenda items for just uh, 
feeling of the time, so I, I'm fine not getting to that. <laughs> and, you know, if you've looked through those worksheets and you have questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer your questions. It's a matter of if I'm going to kind of, um, you know, generate questions for me to answer on my own and then answer it like, like that's the kind of activity that could have gone forever. So at some point, uh, I choose not to do it forever. So, but the questions you ask, they will definitely get a high priority. So ask if you have questions. So I'm pretty sure whether I'm watching or not has nothing to do with whether it crashes. I'm just going to watch it generate code. Even though, again, it's a, not a code that'll work, it's still um, fun to watch. Yeah, I've heard of people using ChatGPT to generate codes. Um, I don't think I would ever do that, just because um, I don't know. So you know, I'm a I'm not a professional programmer. The way programming works for me is. It's to automate the kind of tasks that I could do by hand. And um, for me, I think I need to st think through step-by-step -step procedural thing, um, giving a generative AI, AI a dis description of task to be done and somehow trusting the generated code to be um, not have errors in it. I don't think that's something I would ever feel comfortable with. And unlike uh, checking the free body diagram it draws, where I can quickly tell if it did something wrong, with a code, if there's some subtle error in one line, I might not spot it while I'm reading through it. So uh, I, I don't think I would ever use generative AI to generate code. Um, for my you know, other work. Uh, um, but anyways, so yeah, that these are correct free body diagrams. Simple, good. <laughs> <laughs> let me move on to the next. Uh, yeah, let me. F I'll let it finish answering and then move on to the next question. Uh -oh. Now, friction with the pulley actually wouldn't be included in the free body diagrams because the friction with the pulley would give you a force on the rope. So the way it would get represented is in the difference in the tension force, not, um, not as a separate force. You ask this question, you know, what is touching the object to exert the force? The only thing touching this mass is the rope. So any force on it, other than gravity, comes from the rope. There's no other uh, friction force on pulley separately. Uh, draw a free body diagram of the... So moving in the circular path shown on the diagram. Uh, and let me this time include the direction. Choose and give description of a view which allows you to draw the clearest free body diagram. And actually, there's a um, couple different ways you can go. Uh, you could choose to draw the top-down view. Um, that's uh, best for illustrating the circle. Cool. You can choose to describe a side view where the block is like at your eye level. That allows you to describe the tension, gravity, and normal force. So uh, choose the top-down view again. As I was saying, it's a defensible choice. Now the problem is uh, you have to somehow indicate the gravity and normal force. You could, um, with a good enough justification, say um, those balance each other out, nothing interesting happens there, so you recognize gravity and normal force are there, you just don't do anything with it. Um, that's possible. Attention radially inward, yeah, that's good. Gravity down to center, I sense the horizontal. Yeah, doesn't affect, yeah, that's a definitely a defensible way to go. Normal force. Yeah, omitted. Yeah, wow, wow, that's good. Uh, it might actually draw a good free body diagram. So it's basically going to draw a diagram with one force, tension force, and uh, that should be directed toward the center of the circle. Yeah, this is actually surprisingly good. I'm actually kind of surprised, you know, the, the inclined plane questions, they are like a, uh, archetypal uh, introductory physics questions. So I'm surprised that it did so poorly on these three scenarios involving inclined plane. And it's uh, doing so well on other scenarios that are not as common. It's like, 
I, I, you know, maybe it's because this is not fine-tuned for uh, uh, physics problems. I, I imagine when someone's fine-tuning an AI system for physics problems, yeah, th this is correct diagram. Uh, imagine when someone's fine-tuning an AI system for physics problems, they would pay special attention to <laughs> incline the plane problems. Because, like, look at this set. This is a set of 11 questions. Of those, you have one, two, three, four, five, five scenarios involving like just a short of majority, a plurality of scenarios, a strong plurality of scenarios involving inclined planes. Uh, yeah, th this is a good answer. Uh, let me go to the next one. And I guess this is what I'll show you the code that is generated. Again, it won't work unless you set up your environment correctly for these modules to work. <laughs> Uh, let me try this. I'm just going to do copy and paste the lazy way. And let's see what happens. Copy and paste. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, so let me do copy and paste this way. I'm going to copy the directions. And then do the copy image and paste image. That way um, it actually gets the image. Uh, uh, instead of below figure, the figure shows, yeah, throw a frail black tag and that. Okay, let's see what it does with that. It hasn't done, well, again, it hasn't done well with the inclined plane problem so far. And it kept insisting on breaking up forces into components. Uh, we'll see how it deals with this. <laughs> Gravitational force, just straight downward. Normal force, perpendicular, good. Friction force, yeah. Here, I think uh, you are um, yeah, resting on an incline. And all in order for that to be possible, there must be friction, yeah. And, uh, this is where, like, where is this even coming from? Like, if you have one, you have these. You, like, you shouldn't be drawing two additional arrows that don't belong there. I mean, you know, in the, as part of problem solving steps, you would be breaking forces into components, but you don't treat it like it's a, a separate force. And um, by the way, this uh, also I don't recommend. Uh, free body diagram is a separate diagram for whatever other figures you may have. That's why when you see me draw free body diagram, I start with a dot. That dot is representing uh, the object. And um, and I draw that dot separately of any other figures I have, because it's a graphical problem solving tool. It's not just a figure. It's not a doodle. It, it's a analytical tool. So you want to keep it clean. You want to uh, keep out anything that might cause confusion. Code that I did it so far. Yeah. All that. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell from this code if it's going to draw a correct figure or not. Because I think a lot of this goes into setting angles and all that. Uh, Alright. I think if it's gotten this far, it probably won't crash. Before it was crashing like around up here. Yeah, that, this is a nonsense diagram. <laughs> Grab this in the right direction. We parallel is just way off. Although, uh, you know, left and right, left and down, maybe. Um, friction, okay. Uh, actually, the relative directions of these are good. Uh, so what it's gotten completely off is the normal force. And I guess the fact that it drew weight parallel, it really shouldn't have drawn weight parallel. So, yeah, I don't know why it's so bad that inclined the plane questions. Right? Uh, so, you know, one otherwise, don't give chat GPT-4 inclined the plane questions. Because I, I think uh, having seen what it's done so far, my guess is uh, uh, it's not going to be correct. <laughs> it hasn't gotten a single inclined the plane situation right. Okay, so let me uh, ask the next question. 
Uh, let me not give it hint by um, doing the references to image. I'm pretty sure that actually won't affect anything because I'm giving it an image and a description. I'm pretty sure that's fine. It doesn't need me to, uh, in the description, like tell it there's an image. It's gotten an image. So, uh, passes point A, throw the. So, there should be two forces, both downward gravity and normal force. Let's see if we get that. And I guess it should ignore point B. Yeah, I think we got that A is at the top of the loop. Good. Good image analysis, because <laughs> the instructions don't tell, say that. Downward to our center door, normal by the C, in which case we'll be directed. Oh, uh, that's wrong. Uh, child feels pressed into the seat because the seat is pushing the child away from where the seat is. So that is actually wrong. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's wrong. Um, so I don't think it's going to get it right. So here and on is just wrong. <laughs> Look at my model answer that has the correct uh, diagram and all that. And that's just wrong. I wonder if the reason um, Dali, so, you know, I don't think as part of this response, it's not actually involving Dali. This is just doing a text generation. Because um, it, it's, you know, generating code. So I don't think Dali is actually ever involved in this part. Uh, and Given how long the code generation is taking, DALI might actually be more efficient in terms of how quickly it generates a response. So um, we might go slightly over the hour, but if it does, I'll, I will show you what it was doing when I was asking for just a free body diagram of something without a context. Um, and there's a bit of a randomness in generative AI response, so it might not do uh, today what it was doing yesterday, but I don't know, give it a try. I, I did delete all the threads where I had it because, uh, you know, I use this for work, I keep it clean. <laughs> I, I, it's my only paid for ChatGPT account, so I was asking some other questions. That's, you know, more of a, um, of just nothing actually not safe for work, but, you know, things that nothing have nothing to do with the physics, so. Is it almost done? It's still at a place where it could crash. All right, maybe it won't crash. Ah. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> so the normal force should be downward. Uh, and uh, as long as there's a, some normal force, that means the child is not in free fall. Uh, they, they, they feel like being held to the seat. And um, yeah, this is wrong. Yeah, network error. It's fine. Uh, let me just refresh. Yeah. Okay. So, do I? Yeah. Let's ask it anyway. Uh, so far, it's gotten every single um, every single inclined plane question wrong. So I'm guessing it'll get this wrong. But uh, let's ask it anyway, just in case. Uh, it doesn't get it wrong, <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to uh, get it wrong. Okay, after that, we got two more. Wow, but this took long. So when I was doing this with the perplexity, and I was kind of acting as a human interpreter, uh, translating its uh, directions into a figure, um, that took like 30 minutes. You saw the other video, and... Um, this is taking the whole hour, so it's definitely taking a lot longer. Gravity downward, that's good. Normal force, yeah, that's good. I'm pretty sure gonna talk on, gonna talk about the component of gravity parallel and then perpendicular to the incline again. Don't do that. That is wrong. Um, you do break up the forces, but do it in step number three, not in step number one. Uh, friction force, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, these steps are wrong. <laughs> if you are using ChatGPT, just know that it keeps giving you this stuff that's not right. Uh, 
I wonder how good a chat GPT would be drawing Feynman diagram. So, you know, a lot of the things we do in physics are not quite uh, graphical. Free body diagram is one graphical uh, problem solving tool. And later on the physics, like uh, something that you could do potentially see in physics 4C, there's something called the Feynman diagram that's used to organize calculations in uh, uh, perturbative calculations in particle physics. And um, I wonder how well ChatGPT does drawing Feynman diagrams, just because it's not doing well with the free body diagrams. <laughs> Yeah, at least the drawing it, you know, instructions with these off things, uh, the text-based in instructions seem to be not too bad. But once it starts uh, drawing with a quote, then because there are a lot of places where it can go wrong. So it, it might be a problem with the code generation. Maybe ChatGPT knows the correct direction the force arrow should go, but something in the code generation is messed up, so it can't do it correctly there, who knows. Ah, uh, it's gonna get stopped. Oh, right there. Um, it is kind of boring for me to just watch this, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah. I imagine something that's a fine tuned for physics will can both be faster and more accurate. Well, I, I should be here, right? Yeah, okay, it crashed. But I, I think it, it, it didn't crash because I'm watching the code. It, it just does this from time to time. Yeah, and we'll go slightly over the hour so that we can finish the set. And um, I wonder, can I have a chat GPT open on two uh, screens? Yeah, let me just stay here. Uh, and let me not just uh, switch screens around like someone who's, um, uh, <laughs> someone who's fidgety and <laughs> can't focus. <laughs> Yeah, again, number one, number two, looks great, no problem. And I'm sure um, number three, friction, fine. Did it describe the apply the first last time? It might have forgotten the apply the first. Yeah, um, in fact, in its descriptions too, uh, it, um, I mean, it saw the image. Um, it should have gotten there and apply the force. Um, yeah, again, not all that good. I'm pretty sure if I ask it to describe the image, it would have noticed this arrow and done that. But um, well, after this attempt, uh, I won't bother with it more because I'm pretty sure um, inclined the plane questions, it can't get it right. Who knows why? It was doing photo analysis really well. I gave it some uh, photos of uh, around uh, uh, Lake Merritt and uh, uh, like in Alameda Courthouse, Al Alameda County Courthouse. Uh, it, it, uh, so, you know, I was giving it photos and asking where was this photo taken from? And it, it, it got it right that uh, it's around the Lake Merritt and it's Alameda County Courthouse. It was. Uh, was great, um, but that's the image analysis, not image generation, um, or the plot generation in this case. I wonder if these are counting towards my 50 message limit. Uh, with the DALI image generation, there's 50 message limit per every three hours. I don't know if, because uh, um, this isn't using DALI, it's generating code. So uh, I might not have actually used any of my 50 message limits. We'll see.
I was trying to save those up in case uh, I hit the limit during this session. Uh, <laughs> after this session, I can just play. Because, um, you know, $20 per month subscription, um, it's not all that too bad, which I'm pretty sure is why. <laughs> so, by the way, if you are using Chag, uh, Chag won't um, get you anywhere. All right, so let me not uh, waste any more time with that. I'm just going to refresh. And just to ask it a new question, because uh, if we finished analyzing, I would bet good money that it's not going to give me correct figure anyway. So let's uh, wrap up with the last two questions. Um, I do, uh, I'm interested in seeing how correctly it gets the interaction between blocks. That is something that a lot of students miss. And let's see how well ChatGPT gets it. <laughs> All right. Um, let's regenerate. If it somehow something goes wrong again, I'll just start a new thread. And in the new thread, let me do one thing first before I mess up the timeline of that thread. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, okay. Uh, let me see if uh, its analysis is correct. I wonder when I'm asking it like this, it's uh, ignoring the figure. Oh, no, no, it didn't ignore the figure. Uh, uh, there's gravity, yeah. There's normal force, and there should be tension and friction, yeah. Friction, yeah, that's good. Uh, for the the... Ready, okay, normal force, good. Um, apply the force, good. Yeah. Don't draw components separately. Uh, again, don't draw components separately. Draw the force and then break up into components later. Uh, tension, good. Oh, well, I think it's getting the... Um, so this comes from Newton's third law. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it might. Uh, there I message. Let me try regenerating one more time. So its analysis was great, other than you know directing, uh, trying to break this into components at this state. The things it was uh, saying were good. Uh, I don't know it about its ability to draw correct free body diagram. So, so far, if you ignore the, if you ignore the inclined planes, then you do correct free body diagram for one, ignore free body diagrams, correct free body diagram for five, so, so far, so good, correct free body diagram for six, um, and this is very messed up, so it got three out of four right so far, ignoring inclined planes, which for whatever reason, it doesn't know how to do. Let's see. I'm sure the descriptions are fine. Yeah. Apply the force. Yeah, yeah. So this is better than the last time because um, the, the force is just going in uh, some oblique direction and you deal with the breaking the forces into components later. Yeah, I know I'm over the hour, but uh, we'll finish this set and I will see if uh, I can um, make free body diagram generation to go to DALI instead of this code generation, which I think code generation is better because uh, what DALI does is it's artistic, but it's got nothing to do with the physics. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know if it's artistic I, I, and well, I don't know anything about art anyway. Uh, it, uh, what I would say is it's not physics, it's something else.
Are you almost done? Maybe. Oops. Oh. No, it's still well. Now, if it crashes, I think I'm gonna move on because I've generated twice already. It's still at a place where it could crash. I think it's not hasn't gotten to drawing the figures yet. This probably will give you a good uh, set of horses. You know, I, I think it might actually draw a correct figure. Yeah. Oh, but, well, we'll never know because I'm not gener generating it a third time. Um, yeah. All right, let me do this. I don't think that's going to paste too well. I got to... If the surface below M2 is frictionless. Uh, well, I, I can at least see to this question and see if it's uh, close. Um, so here, um, again, it's a Newton's third law problem. You got to get the interact force of interaction between the two blocks right. Uh, let's see if it does get it right. Everybody diagrams, two blocks. Put a block in one. The gravity, normal force. So far so good. Static friction, yeah. For M1, you'll be to the left. Yeah, good. Or apply the first right. That's on M1. Uh, yeah. Okay. So those descriptions are great. Someone interpreting it correctly will draw correct free body diagram. For M2, there's gravitational force. Normal force. Yeah. Now M2 actually has two normal forces on it. Yeah. This is one of them. Yeah, oh wow, it's getting the second normal force. That's great. Yeah, there's a downward normal force. That's the reaction force paired to that action force. Wow, wow, wow. It's doing uh, interaction well, I think. Because, uh, you know, in question 10, it, it got descriptions right. It just crashed before generating the figure. Static frictional force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So equal, I'm sure that's, that's in reference to Newton's third law. So, um, so it's going to be to the... Opposite in direction. So that should be to the right. Uh, let's look at the figure to see if it actually got it right. Uh, 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 that it's, you know, uh, opposite in direction to that. So, you know, opposite to left, right. Um, yeah, I guess that's all the forces, I think. So the, the apply the force, it doesn't apply directly to M2. The way the M2 moves is through this force of interaction. So, yeah, yeah. The descriptions are great. Um, like if uh, someone who couldn't draw was describing forces to me like this, I had to say, perfect, ten out of ten. Um, if I'm grading on a ten point scale. Now, will it actually generate the figures? Is a separate question. <laughs> um, one, will it generate? Two, will it generate correctly? So, yeah, so uh, again, if you're using ChatGPT for some reason, one, use it ethically, you know, follow the course policy on that. Um, and two, um, don't use it on inclined planes because it's not going to get it right. <laughs> it hasn't gotten a single, okay, errand. All right, that's enough. I, I think uh, we are over time. Uh, the descriptions are great. If the code generation part had worked correctly, it would have done uh, well, um, so let me just leave that there. Let me just try one more thing. So I'm going to start a new thread. And this was the prompt I was trying out before. Uh, draw a free body diagram of a book on a table. And um, when I start out without any context like this, yeah, 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 then it kicks into Dali. 
rather than the text and code generation, it's using DALI, and it's going to basically draw something that's not a free body diagram. <laughs> um, yeah, but I guess uh, when it, when you yeah, that, that's not a free body diagram. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and but I think when you give it an image from a physics textbook, that conditions it enough that uh, that it does that. Uh, make it more like a free body diagram, and uh, and it'll um, do ridiculous things. Like one, this is nothing like a free body diagram. It has a book and a piece of the table. There's no gravity, there's no, uh, like, it's got a bunch of labels for normal force, but it's like, what are they? <laughs> and it's too way too complicated to be free body diagram. Uh, oh, wow, actually, it's simplifying it. Oh, maybe so, uh, more. Uh, so maybe if I keep pushing it, even Dali will generate a free body diagram. Still, like, what's with this plus sign? Is there an, an electric field on the thing? <laughs> what's with those? <laughs> oh. um. But somehow it gets to the idea that what is uh, the kind of core nature of full body diagram is a really simplified diagram. Uh. Yeah, but it's not getting it. Like, it says it's simplifying it, but what's up with those hands? So, all right. Uh. Yeah, so anyways, so uh, let me see within this thread what happens if I give it this and draw free body diagram based on attached image. Right, let's see what it does. See if uh, it still kicks into Dali or if it does something else. <laughs> yeah, it's still in Dali, which means. Uh, it's not going to draw correct free body diagram. Uh, so one of the ways to use generative AI productively, uh, if you're using it for something productive, that is to kind of guide it along the way. Uh, right now, it's uh, on a wrong path, and I'm kind of laughing at it being in the wrong path. So <laughs> Let me just let it finish, and then that'll be the last uh, for this session. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Those of you joining by recorded the video, and as soon as I had a chance to laugh at that image, I will um, end the session. Yeah, that is so ridiculous. That's not a free body diagram of anything. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, bye. Uh, see you next week. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Bye.